Well, hey there, Chris and everybody else. Welcome to Jason Explains Things. Today we're talking about setting up a Tacoma for off-road comms and moves and such. Got it. I thought we were just off-roading. But this is a video, isn't it? Chris, you know that everything is content, right? Fair. That's fair. Well, I hope you guys have been following along here on the channel, but in case you haven't, this is my 2022 Toyota Tacoma TRD Off-Road that I've named Sarge. Finally, it is set up for off-road communications with a GMRS radio and with a dash-mounted rail system for phones and other devices. Let's take a closer look at the radio and rail system, and then we're gonna jump back in time and I'll show you how to install all this stuff. Let's talk about the radio first. So this is the MXT 275 from Midland. It is a GMRS radio. If you are gonna use this, you do need to have a license from the FCC. Uh, I think it's, I'm not exactly sure of the price, but I'll put it on the screen right now. And it, that license is good for your entire family and also for 10 years. So it's not that big of a deal to get it. I've got it, Chris got it. And um, we have used this exact radio for, frankly, what, like two years now? Yeah, uh, we installed it in uh, my 4Runner that my wife drives primarily and also in Chris's Chevy Colorado ZR2 Bison. And I'll have a link in the description for that video if you have one of those vehicles and you want to see how we installed it. So we've used these exact radios for hundreds of hours at this point on multiple trips across multiple states with very minor hiccups to, to speak of practically nothing. We're gonna go over antennas in just a second, but you're gonna want to install the stubby antenna and hardwire everything and not use the little ma magnetic one. And range with that new stubby antenna has been awesome. Uh, we actually did a range test, I think. Yeah, so uh, let's cut to that footage. All right, so I am on my respective side of the valley, out where I live. Jason is gonna be roughly that way. All right, I am at the top of another trailhead that uh, I frequent for mountain biking quite often. Chris is way in the distance, probably, I would say, right at the top over there. So that is eight miles away. We, uh, we sent each other GPS coordinates. If it reaches all the way to there, that's awesome. Chris, can you hear me? Can you hear me all the way over there? Over. I can hear you great, buddy. That's insane. How far away are we now? We are almost exactly eight miles. Wow, that's really cool, really cool. Now, Chris, we got a couple comments with that first range test, didn't we? Oh, maybe a couple. <laughs> Just a few. <laughs> Hey, I welcome comments. Please comment on this video too. That was more for just visualization of, of that these work great. I mean, let's be honest here. When you're off-roading with a group of people, you're gonna be maybe like a mile or two apart. It's about just being, you know, around the corner, essentially, you know, with a little bit of obstructions with hillsides and trees and that kind of thing, and having the radio work great, and it has worked great. And regard, oh, oh, you're over there now, hi. <laughs> well, <laughs> jokes. Uh, let's talk about the rail system. So this is from Cali Raised LED. This rail system is extremely simple. You have a single piece of anodized aluminum that is mounted, I think, with like, I think six bolts uh, to this plastic bezel piece, which is really easy to remove uh, from your dash. I have from track form, uh, two arms right here, one for my phone that removes like that. So it's very easy to take your phone out. And then I have this one over here that has a simple uh, quarter 20 uh, tripod mount and I have that uh, for a GoPro but you a lot of other things use quarter 20. Um, I also love the cable management and this is so awesome so I have my lightning cable going through the track itself it has a, a place to put your cable so unlike a lot of other solutions I don't have any cords right here and I love that it's really really cool. For the rail system, I actually have a discount code for you guys for Cali Raised LED that if you use, will give you 5% off and help the channel. So the information is on the screen now and in the description. And also I'll have Amazon links for all the, for the radio and all the tools and everything else that you're gonna need to do all this stuff. So let's jump back in time to the shop and get this install done. Let's briefly go over all the parts we'll be installing. We have the radio kit that includes the radio, standard handset, ghost antenna, and six meter antenna cable. I ordered the Cali Raised LED accessory dash mount with optional phone and GoPro arms. Also from Cali Raised LED, I'm going to use a ditch light bracket to mount the ghost antenna. This is a really clean mounting solution that I loved on the 4Runner. Rounding out parts, I have an extended fuse cover from Guild Outfitters and an Atta Circuit kit from Amazon. 
Now I've gone ahead and made a last second change to my plans. I'm not going to install the center console molly panels because I have a little bit of a leg room concern with the Tacoma. I'm six foot tall. I'm already a bit of a tight fit. So if you want these, uh, I highly recommend them. They look great. For tools and other supplies, I'll have all this stuff in the description with links. But here's a brief rundown. We have solder butt connectors, high quality wire connectors, heat shrink and flex tubing, mounting tape, electrical tape, zip ties, wire for positive and negative leads, trim tools, drill bits, bailing wire for passing the wiring through the firewall, wire strippers, a drill, and a heat gun. So for this project, we're gonna kind of start on the outside of the truck and work our way in. So we're going to mount the antenna with the ditch light bracket and the antenna cable. Then we'll pass that cable into the cab, which is probably the most intimidating part of this whole thing, but it's really not that bad. And then we'll move on from there. To mount the ditch light bracket, you'll need to remove the two hood hinge bolts. Use a Sharpie to mark the position of the hood relative to the hinge so you can keep your alignment correct. And she's free. Careful. <laughs> a little bit of Loctite on these bolts, so we'll put a little bit of orange when we put it back on. Now secure the bracket and the hinge to the hood, making sure to align it as before. Install the antenna base and the cable to the bracket and route the cable safely into the engine bay. Make sure to keep the cable away from any moving parts and secure it with zip ties. I did several tests to make sure everything was looking good. Time to route the antenna cable into the cab. Use a trim tool to remove the floor trim piece and then this panel. You want to attach your antenna cable to your, uh, your wire that we're going to use to pop through there. And I did this wrong the first time I did this, but you can actually just unscrew this so it's a lot easier to pass through the uh, firewall grommet. The firewall grommet on the passenger side has a perfect spot to use for your cable. Cut the tip off to this passageway and then use a fishing wire to pass the cable through. I like this spot as well because there's a lot less power wiring on this side. Keeping your antenna cable away from other power wiring will increase your radio's performance. But be careful when you do this to not poke any other wiring. You may also want to consider disconnecting the battery while you do this. And with that, we're done with the outside of the truck. I put a, a zip tie on that wiring grommet just to make sure that no moisture got inside the cabin. So let's move inside. Time to mount your radio. I did that first by adding some mounting tape to the radio bracket and sticking it in the desired location. I then pre-drilled two small holes and threaded in two black screws by hand. When mounting your radio, I don't suggest relying solely on mounting tape because it can fail when the interior gets hot in the summer. I'll cover in detail how I adapted the radio power cable into a fused, hardwired connection. But first, let's fund some future video projects. As you can tell, I like to do my own work on my Tacoma, including oil changes, and I'll have a video all about how to do one yourself on a Tacoma that I'll link below. In that video, I use Haviland Pro RS full synthetic oil. Haviland Pro RS is a top tier performance oil that helps maximize engine performance and fuel economy because it resists thickening over time. It's made of 25% sustainably sourced plant-based oils. While it has all the performance benefits of a premium full synthetic oil, it also provides environmental benefits like outstanding fuel economy, emission control, lower carbon, and the fact that it's a USDA certified bio-based product. But most important to me, it exceeds the latest and most demanding industry and automaker standards so you can be sure your engine is protected. I also personally love the easily recycled packaging. Once the container is empty, there's very little plastic waste and you can easily recycle the outer cardboard box. Thanks Haviland for showing my little channel some love and sponsoring this video. Well folks, it's time to come clean to you all. It's the next day and I've been trying to hide this while doing this project, but I am kind of being currently overtaken by a cold. So thanks kids for coughing in my face. But... <laughs> It's so burny. Yeah, hasn't he just got a cold? For God's sake, woman, he's a man. He's got a man cold. Do not, under any circumstances, move from this bed, okay? So let me show you what we've got going on here now for wiring. So I have taken an add a circuit like this. I took the original uh, power cable that came with the radio kit. 
uh, with the inline fuse and cigarette lighting, lighter power, uh, and I cut off the end, and I combined these two things for this. And I am pretty proud of this wiring. Um, we got the original end right here. As you can see, that goes into the back of the radio. Um, I have my ground. I will show you where we're grounding to in just a second, but this is all very nice. Then we have some sheathing that I added, and then we have our ATA circuit on the other side. So I did some um, off-camera testing to see which circuit I should tap into, and I would highly suggest doing your own research. All trucks are different. You know, these trucks have been out for a long time. The circuit that I'm gonna be tapping into that I already did the test on is the USB power circuit. Hopefully I can explain this in a way that makes sense. But when you add a fuse, you put the, the current one that's in there uh, on the one closest to the end here, and then the one that you're adding on top of it, you put here. So um, the USB power that I'm gonna be using is a seven, seven, seven and a half amp uh, fuse and then for the radio I'm using a 5 amp fuse now again This depends on what radio you're using according to my online research This radio that I'm installing specifically only pulls about 3 amps So a 5 amp circuit is going to work just fine So that's what I'm going to be using again, you know if you're using a different radio uh, I think GMRS radios can go all the way up to 50 watts. This one's just 15 um, you might want to use a different fuse with all that done finishing up the radio install is a cakewalk I routed the positive wire with the ATA circuit to the fuse block and secured it away from any hazards with zip ties. I then installed my extended fuse cover from Guild Outfitters with the fuse diagram sticker that matched my truck. I attached my ground wire to the firewall in this spot near the throttle and tucked away all the wiring underneath the carpet. Lastly, I routed the antenna cable to the radio, which is super easy, and then stored the excess behind the center console. Simple as that. Hey, Toby, you want to test the radio? Washington Cascades, from late tonight through late Tuesday night, travel could be very difficult. Monitor the latest forecast for updates on this situation. Winter weather advice. We're all gonna die! <laughs> Let's move on to installing our anodized aluminum accessory mount for our phones, GoPros, and other things. Again, this is from Cali Raised LED, and I have a discount code for you guys in the description if you want to buy one yourself. So this rail is gonna live right here like this. So what you want to do is kind of decide where we want it. Probably about right there looks good. We're gonna mark our holes just by doing this, and then we'll take this off and drill it. <laughs> okay, this process shouldn't be too bad. Uh, we're gonna drill our first hole, this one right here. Uh, we've marked two, but we're gonna just uh, start on the uh, passenger side first. And then we also have this uh, template that we're gonna be using uh, to drill most of them. Second hole. First one's always the scariest. <laughs> I'm also grabbing some hardware just to kind of hold this in place so I really can't screw up. Next, we have uh, one, two, three, four quarter inch holes, so a little bit bigger this time. Whoa, holy crap. That's a little scary. Next, attach the rail to the bezel piece with the supplied hardware. Fitting this perfectly was pretty tricky. For some extra info, I'll link to Cali Ray's LEDs video that they produced in the description. Okay, off camera, uh, we had some issues. So this thing, I mean, it, I, I'm happy with the design. I think it looks really cool. But uh, those tolerances for those holes were all a little bit uh, too small. So I actually had to go and widen each one. That. And, okay, that's a lot better. It's not perfect though. It was, a, it was a war between making this flush and making this perfectly level with the dash. Here, you can kind of see this is like flush perfectly and this is a tiny bit not flush. All of these dashes are not exactly the same. You know what, that is a lot better. That was a lot better than a couple tries ago, so. Awesome. This off-road comms project was part one of phase two uh, of a multi-part series uh, where we're gonna get 
Sarge here like all decked out. And a lot of the stuff has already been installed because I went on an installing spree in December and it's all kind of spoiled. So you can kind of just look at the truck and go, I think, ah, that's different. <laughs> so stay tuned and subscribe for that. And we got a lot of cool stuff for Chris's truck too. Absolutely. You want to tease that? Sure. I am not done yet. The old flying bison oppa here is about to achieve its final form. It's going to get bigger and maybe like big that. and Big and round. Big and round. Yep. Well, guys, until next time, God bless. And don't forget to do it yourself. Yay.